so I have control for now. So just sort of uh, watch the controls in front of you and see how much they're actually moving. Yeah. So okay. what I'm doing right now is called a two stage pull up. So I'm just pulling it in enough collective that she gets light and yeah. she starts wiggling about like that. So I can see what sort of corrections I need to put in to get her stable. So a bit more left pedal, left stick. She's really light on the pedal on the skids right now. So now just a little bit more power. Mm -hmm. And up she comes. And then barely perceptible movements. Gotcha. So if I want to start moving forward from here, I just give it a very small touch forward. And she starts wandering forward. I want to stop. Very slight touch aft, and she stops. If I want to turn left, a little bit of left pedal, adjusting with the cyclic. Very tiny movements. And then to set back down, I just edge the collective down ever so slightly. She comes down nice and gentle. Just okay. like that. I can let it go. How you do I have control. I have control. Not moving where you want it, make a correction and then take it back out again. So you're just dragging it along the ground right now. Easy with it. You're making very drastic corrections on those pedals. Yeah, I need to mess with the pedal pretty much. Mm. Nice. If this was a real helicopter, I would be able to take just the pedals from you and let you concentrate on collective and cyclic. But unfortunately, DCS can't do that. So why don't we try getting up and flying along somewhere? Yeah, I'm just trying to experiment with maybe trying to use my twist. Yeah, that might my, be better for you. My rudder's a bit too unstable for helicopters. It works fine for aircraft because you're taxiing. It doesn't matter if it resets every couple seconds. Yeah, I did notice so that. a helicopter, yeah. So does it reset like that just because the axis is itself is crap or because it's double bound with something? It's because it's uh, messed up. All right. Besides, this will be easier because now I can literally just do this with the joystick and then pull it back a bit and I got the rudder. Mm-hmm.
check if it's double bound, because that's weird if it's it is now as well. It looks like it's double bound, yeah. That looks a whole lot better. So when m making corrections in helicopters, especially in the hover, take whatever correction you think you need, halve it, make it, and then remove it. Because there right. is a slight delay in the system, so if you hold whatever correction you think you need, by the time the helicopter responds, you will have over-controlled. This is nice and smooth. And you'll need to use rudder to drive the nose around the turn as well. Drop the collective down just a bit to stop us climbing. There we go. Okay. So now we're g above 20 knots or so. So uh, we're in what's known as effective translational lift. The wind moving sideways through the rotor makes it a lot more efficient which reduces yeah. the power needed to maintain altitude and also makes it behave more like a wing. Gotcha. So the helicopter is doing helicopter things now rather than fighting. <laughs> well, it's doing more like fixed wing things now instead of helicopter things. And also, rather than pulling back through the turn, try to keep the nose level or even point it down a bit. That'll maintain your airspeed, and then the rotor itself will pull you around the turn. I like this. Yep. And if you wanted to slow down, how would you say you achieve that? Start ever so slightly, uh, stick click back. So that'll start climbing and washing up airspeed. So, so do I slowly decrease collective with it? Yeah, so as one, collective slowly comes down as the stick comes back. So if you're descending too much, then keep the collective where it is, add some more aft stick. slowing down nicely. And now we're speeding up again. Yeah, there we go. And you'll find you'll probably need a lot of aft stick, more than you're used to from fixed wing. Yeah, I'm noticing I kind of have to pull it like all yeah. the way back. Like pull the power in, power in. Nose down, nose down. Okay. I have control. So what happened there was, we slowed down below effective translational lift, which dramatically increased the power required to maintain our altitude. So and we just we kind of scared the drop. 
and we were descending so we started entering what's known as settling with power so the engine governors have a delay so if you just rip up the collective now um you're going to be increasing the angle on the main rotor before the engines have had time to spool which is just going to bog the system down and we're going to drop and then yeah. that can lead to vrs vortex ring state where basically we're descending through our own rotor wash which is sort of like a stall in the fixed wing right. so as we slow down below about 40 knots you're going to start bringing that collective back in okay got it So I'll just get us going again, and can give it another shot. Okay. So I've got the collective at about 50% and holding about 30% forward. You ready? Yep. Go out of control. Start feeding in the power. More power. More power. Get that nose back. And now we're hovering, more or less. Ooh. And rotor strike. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> So what happened there was, um, we were unstable and had some forward airspeed when we touched down. And yeah. because we're A, on dirt, B, don't have wheels, and C, we're moving slightly sideways as well. Basically everything gripped up on the skids and rocked us forward and then back and our rotor smacked the ground. Okay. So. Yeah, we have no tail rotor anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be enough. So, let's grab my new bird and keep going. The animation my pilot just did. <laughs> uh, your pilot doesn't exist anymore. Uh, for me, he opened the door, ran, and just face planted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the um, that's the ejection. Yeah, he just kind of face plant. <laughs> well, if you think about it, if that rotor explodes, it's gonna just go over him. There we go. All right, let's give this another go. Cool. And remember, the higher the collective is, the more left pedal you'll need. Don't forget that up and left stick as well. So you, to take off, you need aft stick because the rotor mast is canted forward by about five degrees. So that when we're in forward flight, the fuselage is level, but that means we hover slightly tail down. So when you pick right. up, you use aft stick to level out the rotor disc. And then left stick is to counteract the airflow from the tail rotor pushing us sideways to the right. Nice hobby you got going on there. Yeah. Okay, now the 
question is where to fly. I can't exactly check the map. <laughs> well, why don't you uh, go uh, left or right? It's up to you. Down this taxiway, and basically just fly a circuit. bit left. Not quite that much left. Very good. Very nice slowdown. And if you want to practice uh, handling the cyclic and the pedals without worrying about the collective, if you get us down to under about 20 feet, then you can putz around in ground effect and you'll basically be able to leave the collective where it is and we'll just sit in that cushion of it. And as long as you keep us below 20 knots, then we'll just sit there. Seventy knots right now. <laughs> easy with it. And just drop the collective. There you go, nice little ground effect.
beautiful. <laughs> oh. Now I see what um, what's it called? Ghost, uh, Sa Ghost Santa, I think. Santa Ghost or um, the Apache guy. Yeah. When he talks about when he says his wrist hurts at the end of that. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. So um, you can use the trimmer to alleviate that. The way it works in helicopters is. You put the controls where you need them to be for that particular maneuver, hit the trimmer, and immediately return the stick to center. Mm -hmm. And then that basically tells the game that this random position is now the new zero. Gotcha. And when the stick goes back to center, then it'll be moving about that new zero. All right. And basically, once you're in a stable condition, so whether that's um, in a hover, in a good climb, cruise, whatever, basically, once you're no longer making constant adjustments, then you can trim, and then you'll just make tiny corrections from there on. Hmm. Got it. Don't, nah, but don't use it too often, nah, because then you'll basically just confuse yourself and helmet fire. Mm -hmm. So how do we put a rock? Okay. So Okay. All right, let's see. Is there how do I add like a a door gunner? No, I kind of want to practice being able to fly it somewhat uniform. <laughs> so, to be able to rearm, if you look down at the central pedestal here, yeah, you see on my side where it says 251? Yeah, the radio. Yep, so just below that, you'll see this selected wheel with PBT INT 1234. Yeah. So it needs to be on INT to be able to contact ground crew. There you go. Got it. Cool. So now you can hit your trigger to bring up the comms menu. Yeah. Yep, and then go through ground crew rearm refuel. Rearm refuel. Ooh, that's nice. And then the door gunners are the central two positions. The next ones out are your rockets, and the furthest out are the uh, fixed forward guns. Right. Now, if you're going to load up with all of that, you'll want to take the fuel down yeah. to at least 40%. Nah, I'm just going to take door gunners. Okay. There we go, Earl and Thomas yeah. are on board. Yeah, how do I open the doors for them? So they'll open the doors automatically once you set their ROE to yeah. something other than hold. Alright. Is there like an unarmed targets we can call in at the X runway? Yep. I won't do that because uh, it's very wonky in VR. Ah, uh, okay. So, bring up your AI panel 
and set that ROE to something. So, return fire, they'll only shoot if shot at. Free fire, they'll shoot at anything red they see. There we go, doors open, and they're on the guns. Nice. Just remember, she's a little more heavy now. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah. So pushing those down, getting some airspeed. There we go. There's airspeed coming in. So you see your airspeed indicator, yeah? down more. Yeah, there we go. So, if you look at the stack to just to the left of the airspeed, and the one at the very bottom, labeled exhaust, mm -hmm. that's your exhaust gas temperature. If that mm -hmm. ever goes above red, the engine will catch on fire and blow up. Oh. So, as you're taking off, try and keep an eye on that, and uh, don't pull collective beyond the yellow. And if you're finding, <laughs> and especially if you've got rocket pods and miniguns, now uh, you Basically may find when you're working it to its uh, max extent, it starts to. Yeah. So if you're really heavy, you might find you simply can't gain altitude straight from a hover. So what you have to do in that situation is pick up into ground effect, accelerate along the ground until you're above about 20 to 30 knots, and then start a gentle climb. Because once you pass ETL, uh, the torque requirement will back off, and so the engines will spool down a bit, which will let you pull just a little bit more collective. We're doing good so far. This is pretty much exactly where the Huey is most happy, at about 90 knots in about 200 feet. This is basically your playground, right here. So once you're comfortable with where you have the controls, now hit that trimmer switch and immediately let go of the stick, let it come back to center, and then start making corrections again. nose down. How's that? Yeah, it's better. So with the way the game has the trimmer set up currently, as soon as you hit that switch, it'll update both the trim position and the relative control position. So it essentially doubles whatever control you have. So you need to immediately let your stick come back to center. Now, in the special options, you can change that to central position trimmer mode, which will, uh, when you hit the trim switch, it will update the trim position, but won't update the relative control position until after you return it back to center. It does mean until you do bring it back to center, you won't be able to do anything with the stick at all, but it will stop those bumps and jolts. opening up any second now. Oh, he's been opening up for a while. I've been hearing him, like, feel it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Pushing the helicopter to the, like, a right roll machine gun. Oh, yeah. I can't hear him for some reason. 
our uh, propellers are kind of drowning them out a bit. I can't hear a damn thing from that gun. So how are you finding it? Really cool. Nice. Now they just need to add a Vietnam map. <laughs> I know, right? It's like the one theater award they need to add, especially with the new stuff coming in. Yeah. Like they're adding the Kiowa, the F4, the A6. So it's like now I'm playground. 15 and 15 are all here. So yeah. But, but no, we we get the Kola Peninsula. Which is like a naval place, not a. Yeah. Aircraft. It's like do they do they think they're building cold waters or something? Come on. Yeah. Out of a barn, but it looked cool at least. Yeah, that's why they just started putting miniguns on them. It's like, well, they're gonna miss. Might as well put a bunch around since the higher chance at least one hit the target. Yep. Oh. That's a lot of flares. Yeah, they work. It does like a little program, I see. Um. That or I just pressed it too much. I think you just pressed it too much. Ah, I know what's happening. So, the Huey's multi-crew is a bit crap. Um, so whenever yeah. one of us presses, um, presses a switch in here, uh, the sim gets confused about what position it should be in between the two crew members so yeah. basically it just keeps flipping back and forth so when you hit that uh, flare button um, the game was confused whether it should be pressed or not pressed so it's basically so it just, just kind of held it just mashing it so that's why we just dumped all our flares it should be just two per press So power lines are modeled, so just be yeah. careful of them. You're doing amazingly well for an hour's training. Is that a farp up ahead? Yep. Let's see if we can uh, avoid hitting one of those giant radio antennas and blacking out comms in the whole entire OD of Georgia. I know. Who the hell thought to build like, a farp oh, right there? What, are you trying to talk to, like, New York from here? <laughs> Unhappy with the approach at any time, keep the nose down and add a bit of power and climb out. Try again. Do a 
still at 90 knots. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I'm trying to slow us down here. It's going down. Okay, there you go. Come around again. The Terry has changed their skin. They're looking very sky blue today. Speed good. Power, power. There we go. Never want to let that descent rate get away from you. Easy with it. I guess you're holding the stick in a weird position. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> so you I mean, we're in one piece, but I kind of scraped it. Did you retrim at any point during that? No. That's why. So the Not central it. position was wherever it happened to be for cruise, yeah, it was like and you're trying to right force right it the, yeah. into the landing position, and you're running up against the curves. So. Got it. When you pull it very far from center, it gets very sensitive. Yeah, because so, they're just kind of rolling right a bit. I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah. So um, what I generally do is, um, as I'm slowing below about 50 knots, um, assuming I'm stable by that point, I'll trim again for that new position, and that should be fairly close to where the stick needs to be for landing puts it back to center, which keeps it nice and spongy. Alright. Here, I'll be right back. I'm just rearming the chopper with uh, rockets and miniguns. Yep. And taking the door gunners off. I'll jump in my own chopper. Request rearming. Mm. Copy. Rearming complete.
Hell am I coming from there? That's not where I want to be. Lady. Request rearming. Copy. Rearming complete. Yeah, you doing good? Actually, before I take off, how do I re-trim it? Because it's still kind of messed up. So, um, do your uh, two-stage pull-up. So be very slow and gentle with it. And then once you find a position where it doesn't want to buck around, trim it there. How do I retrim it? <laughs> so, do your two stage pull up, very slow and careful, and when you find a position where it doesn't want to buck around again, trim it there. Welcome to Barb London. Deliver cargo to the circle marked with smoke and tires to the north of the landing pad. Right, Did you hear that computer voice just now? No. Yeah. I just had a bot tell me, welcome to Farp London, something about cargo. I think I heard that from Raz once it had something to do with CTLD, I think. Mm. Right? There you go, very nice. Following you. Now, do you know how to arm your weapons? No idea. Alright, so you might want to sit down again. Okay. 
so by your uh, co-pilot's left hip underneath the radios yes you'll see a Rocket panel with pair yeah so that'll determine how many rockets come off the aircraft with one breast mm -hmm. the switch to the left of that selects what weapon your uh, yeah. triggers then it selects two yeah. two point seven five which is a hydra and then 40 40 millimeter grenades which we don't which have I'm, yeah unfortunately so yeah 762 the is the miniguns and then the middle position is rockets um, yeah. if you set your co-pilot's ROE to anything other than hold and he engages he will switch it back to 762 so you can't fire rockets and guns at the same time gotcha okay so we tell him to hold fire yeah. and then the panel below that selects which side uh, the weapons you'll activate left right or both and then uh, the switch to the right of that panel is your master arm how do I drop the M60 site? Do I just click on it? Say again? The the rocket site. Okay. How do I drop it? So, oh, if you look around the front of it, there'll be a little power switch. So you flick that back to on. And then on oh. the front of it, there's a catch there's to some... bring it down. Yeah, I hit the catch, but I didn't hit the power button. Yeah. So if you crane around to the left, you should be able to get a peek at it. Uh, actually, you can't move your head sideways, can you? No. Uh, Light elevation knob. Uh, looking. Flexible sight. Uh, so it should be... Uh, wait a minute. Is it flexible sight or something else? Pilot sight, here we go. Uh, pilot sight switch is the binding you're looking for. Right. Okay, and then you can change the elevation as well. If you've got those tables. Which actually is one on the site itself. That's really handy. I don't tend to use the site, honestly. I just go by the full of shot. Yeah, I just use the site to get kind of like an area to fire the first one at. Yeah. Alright, let's go blow up those uh, trucks. Cool, I'll follow you. Base like lost its grip on them. <laughs> there you go. So nose down to get some airspeed. Generally, you don't want to be climbing quite so steeply in a helicopter. They don't tend to like it very much. Yeah. It's always concerning when I see the entire instrument just dash shaking. Yeah. So that is a great um, indicator of uh, ETL actually. Because as you pass through that uh, band, that's what causes that shake. So as you're accelerating, once you get that shake, then you know you're pretty much flying in clear air. Okay. And then as you're slowing down, um, once you start getting the shaking, then that's pretty much your last ditch moment to start bringing the power in before you start falling. Also, uh, a note about the miniguns, uh, they have a small spool up time, so you'll have to hold the uh, yeah. weapon button. Speaking of which, I'm going to test my guns. Good test.
I want to hit. Looks like you only took the uh, seven of the cubes. Yeah. The light ones. Crossing on the... Good time getting fixated. Didn't seem to do much to the guy. Apparently, there are only 762. Yeah, but these are also like little trucks. <laughs> Watch your altitude. Goes down. There you go. <laughs> Your rounds nearly bounced up and hit me. <laughs> Probably soon. 
Yeah. Thanks again for the left. No worries. Anytime. And thanks again for the heat. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. This is making me kind of want to get behind now just for the sake of getting close like this. <laughs> I'm uh, currently testing out the Hind. Um, so far, she's very top heavy. It flies kind of like a fixed wing, from what I know. It's like once you have it dipped in a direction, it'll go very fast in that direction and very like stable in a straight line in that direction. Yeah. But slowing down is a pain. From what I've uh, found so far, she does not like hovering. That's more of a Western helicopter thing, yeah. Yeah, like um. What we were doing at the airfield just before, uh, just like putzing around, the hind does not like that. It likes to like yeah. just get up and go. Yeah. Which is why it's always funny in the action movies, you see it kind of do that like J-hook turn and then just hover there and look at the bad guy. I know exactly <laughs> which movie you're thinking of. Raz isn't yeah. here, so we can name it. Top Gun 2. That did it in Rambo 3. Yeah. That mission me and Raz were doing the other night in the valley was very Top Gun like. And, I know. Uh, Power lines? Yeah. Okay. So it was tempting me to try and take GBUs just for the sake of Top Gunning. <laughs> but, like, th nah. If, if we had a dual seater, it would work, but. Mm. Dodging a SAM, avoiding the trees, and getting a laser on target and dropping. Yeah, you need a whizzo for that. Yeah. Jedi, Jedi, Jedi! <laughs> Would you like it if DCS modeled failures like that? That would be nice. They should have a thing where you can adjust how often you want it to be on your client, though. Hmm. I mean... There is the allow random failures button. Yeah, but isn't that just for like, oh no, your engine turned off. Yeah, I've never tried it before, but you can also um, set up specific system failures as mission triggers. Yeah. Like, I think um, it'd be cool if you had some failures, like you pulled too many G's and the bomb is kind of like jammed on the pylon now. or your Yeah, if, if we got like hung stores and things like that. Kind of like damage while you're flying the plane, like. Yeah. You bent your pylon, and now the bomb won't drop. Yeah, yeah. Actual consequences for overging the aircraft, or just you know, not flying to the specification of your loadout. Like your full bombs, and you pull yeah. like XGs, and it's just like, well, one yeah. ripped off, one's jammed, and that <laughs> one, you have like two working bombs now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing like that is, um, like the Mirage 2000, where you just rip them off. But yeah, we don't. We just don't get hung stores in this game, unfortunately. The MiG-15, you can um, if you pull too hard with uh, the 600 and the 400 liters, you can jam the release. You can bend the release pins, and you will not be able to drop your tanks. It really sucks when only one of your tank drops, and one of the tank pins are still in, because then you can't roll for shit. Again, hush my mouth. We do get hung stores. Welcome to Farf, London. Deliver cargo to the circle marked with smoke and tires to the north of the landing pad. It's just the certain planes get on. Mm. Nice oh, yeah, landing. It. Thanks again for, for the the Huey guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is he enjoying it? He is oh, yeah. enjoying it and flying it pretty damn well. Oh, yeah. Day when you one. come in for a landing, you're just holding your breath the whole time, just like, please work, please work, please work, don't has spin. He, has he vrs it yet? Um, almost. I, uh, I took the troll back before he pancaked it completely, but... Nice. Yeah, <laughs> VRS is when your rotors decide, um, I think it's they either decide not to get lift, or you pull too hard on the collective and your engine RPM can't keep up with it or something like that. Yeah. That what no, VRS, no, VRS is when your when your downwash gets circled back into your um, the top of your rotor disc. Yeah, the yeah, first you one you described with. was settling with power, which yep, yep, yep. like um, the the American um, civil and I'm pretty sure military uh, training basically teach them as the same thing because settling with power will lead to VRS. 
but um, they are slightly different things. All right, well, I'm going to have to hop off. I'll be back on later tonight. I'm just going to go to dinner. Okay. Okay. Yep. See ya. Thanks again. Bye. Oh, Bye. yeah. Sweet. Glad he enjoyed it. Mm. I, did you get uh, my PayPal? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep, yep. I told you I'd pay half. Yay. So, I've uh, also flown behind for about a hot second. How do you like it? It is fucking top heavy. Okay, that's it's not promising to me when coming from a helicopter guru. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, imagine, like, trying to balance a rake on your hand upright. Oh god, okay. Yeah, it, it is like that. It does not like hovering. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that. I've also noticed, um, I've, I was reading into Russian doctrine about the Hind, um, with full fuel, full um, rocket pods, four ATGMs, and a full complement of 16 troops, or a small jeep, um, the helicopter does not have the power to take off. No, it needs a running takeoff. Uh, yeah, so it needs, and the only reason it's able to do it with a running takeoff is because the little wings, which Russia actually do call wings on the hind, can generate enough lift to take enough stress off of the helicopter to keep it in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is fucking awesome, actually, dude. That is as Russian as you could get, bro. Thing don't fly, give it lift additionally. <laughs> yeah. Part 15. I do really. I'm. I'm really excited for the the hind though. Yeah. All right. So what's your plan? What do you What do you want to do? What are we doing, Captain? Uh, I'm just figuring out some more of the hind stuff right now. Okay. Where have you? Uh, I'm sitting at uh, Fart London in our Huey right now. I'm just okay. looking up Chuck's guide for the radios. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna head to Batumi and a P. Okay. And Le P! No idea what the fuck I'm doing. 